We're going to uh, start a new series. Um, we have now moved out of the Hope series, which was a real uh, blessing. Uh, I wasn't here last week, but the wonderful Wendy Howson did a postscript to the Hope series uh, called Hope Continued, and just absolutely loved uh, what she brought here to church last Sunday. If you missed that, you can catch up on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, just a wonderful talk about thinking about the invitation of intimacy with Jesus and the life-changing, um, the life-changing decision that that really is. And so, yeah, do catch up on that. Well, we want to transition now into uh, a few weeks where we're going to look at uh, the vision and the mission of our church. As you will know, uh, a couple of years ago, I launched Reach, which is a very ambitious 10-year plan in response to what we believe God is calling us to as a church family. It's worth saying that when we talk about church family, we're part of a broader, larger movement in the UK and across the world called The Vineyard. And some of you will know The Vineyard story. It was founded by John Wimber and others uh, back in the <clears throat> excuse me, early 80s, late 70s. And it's worth saying that the vineyard movement is at its core a missional movement. What do I mean by that? I mean that we understand and take hold the reality that we are in a spiritual battle and we are called to extend God's kingdom here on earth. And that we are part of that, we're caught up in that. And that the, the, the mission of the church is to save the lost. That is the role of the church, that we are on a mission. And as part of the vineyard, there's about 130 churches in the UK and about 2,500 globally. And as a, as a movement, we exist to extend the kingdom of God here on earth. And so what I'd like to do as we look at REACH for this year is I'd like us all to reach our, read our mission statement, which we can do so looking at uh, Matthew, I think you'll probably know where I'm going with this. It's on Matthew um, 28, 19 to 20. It'll be on the screen if you're in the room, and if you're online, it'll be on your device as well. But this is the mission statement of the church. Let me read it now. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. If you're wondering what we should be about, that that's our mission statement. You see, the church isn't a community hub in the sense that we are a group that just gets together, has fun, and then goes home. We are the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is on a mission to make Christ known to the world around us and to make disciples. That is what we are about. And <clears throat> as a church, we take that very seriously. And that's why uh, two years ago, I, re um, I launched REACH, which is that 10-year plan that I said. And it's called REACH because it's about extending our reach to reach the lost. That's the phrase that you'll hear a lot around this church if you're new that we're called to extend our reach to reach the lost. And I said when I launched this that it's time for us to reach further than we've ever reached before. It's time for us to extend ourselves and to spend ourselves on people that have yet to find Christ. And you see, reach, which I'm going to look at in more detail in a moment, really does have a dual purpose. The first purpose is that we fulfill that mission, that mandate that Christ gave to his disciples and has given to us that we would make disciples. But the other purpose of REACH is that it is a purpose-built, tailor-made discipleship program for you and for me. You know, who? if I asked you who wants to be like Jesus, I suspect that many will put your hands up. Then I'll ask you, well, who wants to live like Jesus? And then maybe not so many hands go up. You see, we are called to extend ourselves and to sacrifice ourselves for those around us that have yet to know Jesus. Back in 2019, this was, I think, the first year that I was uh, the senior pastor. This is my sixth year. We had uh, a prophet, Isabel Allam, come to 
church as part of a conference we were co-hosting with Catch the Fire at the time. And we had the blessing of Isabel Allen coming to speak with us on the Sunday services. And at the end of her talk, she gave uh, me and the church a prophetic word, which I think went on for about 15 minutes. And I want to quote from you an excerpt of that prophetic word. She said this, there are many shepherds in the church that need to be released with authority as well a way to be opened up for them. It is time to position people in the post they need to be in and to open those multiple gates. There are many racehorses in this church ready to run. Open the gates for the racehorses of this house. Release them to their races for they need to run. My job is to open up those gates and let you run. We're here to equip the saints for the work of the ministry as we read in Ephesians. But you see, part of reach is not just giving us a context to grow in our giftings, It's a way in which we release you to go and do extraordinary things in his name. And that's what we have seen over the past couple of years as we've looked at reach. Just to add another dimension to this before I look specifically at reach, around the same time, I was uh, at home in my garden and it was sunny, a bit like this morning. And as I looked upon this garden which was, you know, it's fairly well manicured. I like to mow the lawn now and again and uh, get rid of some of those weeds. Beyond our fence, we, we, we live in a kind of rural location, a semi-rural location. There are fields that we back onto on the back and indeed on the sides. And those fields don't look as well manicured as my garden. In fact, they could do with a, whoever owns them could probably do with mowing the lawn. Sometimes there's horses in them, which is lovely because they get to mow the lawn as they eat the the grass, but as I sat there in my garden, there was the sense that the Lord said to me, Mark, church can be a bit like your garden. You work on it, not that there's anything wrong on it. You make sure the seats are comfortable. You give donuts, which are nice, and, and all those things, and it's rather comfortable. But that's, the danger there is you just stay in your garden. That's not your mission. The mission is to go beyond your fence into those fields that need to be cultivated for me. Why? Because the harvest is great, but the the laborers are few. And we feel that as a church, and I don't mean just here at St. Albans, I mean globally, there is always that tension of, well, we want church to be a comfortable place, We, we want to have fun, we want to be with one another, but the danger is we can become a bit of a club. And it just centers around the club experience. But that's not what God has called the church to be. God has called the church to go beyond the manicured gardens and go and cultivate the fields beyond us. And that is the heart of reach, that we go out there into a world of lost men and women and children and as we proclaim the glory of Jesus Christ. So how are we going to extend our reach? Many of you will know this, but if you've joined us recently, I know that many have, This will be new to you. How are we going to extend our reach to reach the lost? By doing this, creating spaces and places for people to encounter Jesus. That's how we are extending our reach. That's the way in which we respond to the call of God. And let me just work backwards on this. Why why is Jesus highlighted here, encounter Jesus? Because everything centers on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the transformational power of Jesus Christ. I mean, we read it in the Bible, don't we? The woman who had the issue of blood and the restoration she received as she reached out and touched Jesus' robes. What about Nathaniel from the fig tree? As Jesus called him out by name, as he encountered the risen Lord, he found a purpose that he never had 
the woman at the well. And she encountered Jesus, and what did she encounter in that moment? Freedom that she found in Jesus to live a life free from the bondage of sin. What about Zacchaeus in the tree? You remember that story? Jesus called him out of that tree, but in so doing, he called him out of shame into a life to bless others. And last week, no, the week before, we had 18 people being baptized. And I just love hearing their testimonies. I'm reminded of uh, Maddie who gave her testimony. She says that, you know, she was living a life of destruction, but then she found hope in Jesus. And her life was changed. There was another lady who talked about a life of drugs, a life of self-harm and broken relationships, but when she encountered the living Lord, the living Christ Jesus, her life was transformed. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is at the center of what we do, who we are. John 14, 6, what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not I will show you it, big difference. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says this, no one comes to the Father except through me. Not all ways lead to God. Good works don't lead to God. Because your parents are Christians doesn't mean that you go, uh, you are led to God. It's Jesus is the way. It's encountering Jesus and having a relationship with him. And so everything we are engineered, if you want to use that word, to do is about creating spaces and places where people can encounter the living Lord. We create the space and then Jesus moves. I mean, part of our role here is to remove as many obstacles in people's way to get to Jesus. So, let's have a look at a little bit of this. Creating spaces. What does that mean? Well, we thank God for the amazing facility we have in this building. But being a good steward means that we always have to ask ourselves the question, are we using this space in the right way? And can we create more space within this building? And so over the next decade, we're two years in, we'll be creating new spaces within this building within ways people can reach Jesus. In 2022, as way of a recrap, rec recrap, <laughs> wow. Shame this service is streamed and not the 11.30, right? That's hilarious. He pauses with a drink. Yes, your pastor is infallible. Uh, in 2022, <laughs> We set a target to create a brand new youth facility, including an auditorium, a studio space, lounge and breakout rooms, allowing large numbers of youth into our building, both on Sundays, but throughout the week as well. And we did that, we achieved that. And in that, we have extended our partnership with STEP, who work within the majority of schools in the region, and with 267 and other organizations as well, where youth come in this building throughout the week, thousands since that time have come into this place and encountered Jesus. We also look to build a brand new space for Ventureland, our six to 11 year olds, creating a larger space for more children to encounter Jesus. We also created a brand new special educational needs and disability space, allowing us to reach those children and families who currently have no support with existing church spaces, and we launched our treasure chest ministry. What a year 2022 was. Last year, what did we do for spaces? We launched a brand new young adults ministry, which began and grew rapidly. You know, we had a midweek gathering that started with a small seven people in a connect group, and that's increased to more than 40. And in fact, as I understand, on the WhatsApp group for the young adults, there's a, there's plus 70 in that, started from that seed. And uh, there are four groups that meet across the region in St. Albans, Stevenage, Luton, and Welling Garden City. I'd like, to, I'd like to read you a testimony from a young adult that, that joined Verso over the past year, a testimony of the new young adults ministry, that space that we created. 
The Young Arts Ministry, they say, has been a life-changing part of my journey. Stepping into Verso over a year ago, it was tough to initially find where I fit in, but with the Young Adult Connect Group, I was able to cultivate new relationships with people my age who were like-minded and were on fire for God. The socials are such a great way to get to know one another, have fun and just build relationships too. Since breaking into location-based groups, this has been amazing to really deepen our connections. I know I have a solid group of people who I see every other week. I cry, I laugh, we pray and support one another in a safe and open space where growth in our faith and relationship with God is at the forefront. My personal relationship with God is stronger than ever and I'm so grateful for the young adults ministry. Isn't that amazing? If I had the time, I could read you more. But we responded to the Lord by creating that new space and we are going to be hiring this year, this year a new young adults pastor uh, that is being advertised on our site at the moment to uh, help support that growing ministry. We also last year created new worship spaces, uh, Worship Garden, which is coming in a few Saturdays time, Space, which is our monthly uh, worship um, um, and prophetic dance and art space. It's called Space for a reason. It does what it says on the tin, as they say. We launched Verso Music. Did you know that one of the songs we sang earlier is from Verso Music? Uh, Praise Him, All You Creatures was written in this place. And so uh, we're going to be continued to uh, invest in songwriting and publishing and supporting other ministries in terms of worship, which we've started to do. So that's just a, a sense of what we've done on spaces, and there's much more than that. But it goes beyond the building. We invested in our online space. Uh, we know that many, many thousands a month encounter Jesus through our online ministry, whether it be the services or other content. I was uh, greatly encouraged to hear of a, a testimony from a lady that was watching us in Jamaica. And she started watching the service and she had um, a physical ailment. And uh, she was watching the service. And uh, nearer the end, when it was ministry time, when we were praying, she dozed off. And when she woke up, she was completely healed. Isn't that amazing how God moves? What a great testimony. And so, Creating that space in an online reaches people that need to encounter the living Christ. What about places then? What's places? Well, when we launch Reach, um, I said that we're going to be creating new physical places outside this building. That as a church, in addition to continuing to plant autonomous uh, churches, as those opportunities arise, we'll be moving to a new model of church called uh, multi site whereby we will have other sites as part of this church in geographical locations uh, around this region. One church body, but with multiple sites. And in 2022, we launched our first new site, Verso Hatfield. And uh, yeah, I would like to read you a testimony. This is from someone. Uh, so um, Jenna, Jenna and AJ, the site pastors of Verso Hatfield, Jenna uh, sent me this testimony of someone. One Sunday, a young single mum turned up with her two-year-old son. She was struggling financially, needed some nappies for her little boy. Kathy, who runs the food bank at Friendship House, Friendship House is where we meet on a Sunday, and who also attends Verso Hatfield, was able to give her son uh, nappies, and she stayed for the service on the Sunday. I got to pray with her at the end, and as I finished, she asked me if I could hug her. When I, sorry, she had asked me if I had hugged her. When I said I hadn't, she told me how she had felt someone's arms physically wrap around her and hug her. When I told her it was God and he was comforting her, she was moved to tears and exclaimed, oh wow, this stuff is real. Amazingly, Jenna said, I had met this girl before. When I went to a house a year before, to pick up something I'd bought from her on Facebook Marketplace. 
I had shared a word of encouragement with her then and invited her to church. She didn't come. And I didn't see her again until that day, nearly a year later, when here she was, having been invited by someone else, experiences, experiencing God's love for her again. Isn't that an amazing testimony? I want to read you another one from Verso Hatfield. Another week, an Iranian man turned up. He had woken up that morning and gone for a walk, not knowing where he was going. He felt something lead him to Friendship House, and when he saw that there was a church meeting, he came in. At the end of the service, he started to cry. When I asked him what was wrong, he said he wanted to believe but was scared that what we were saying about Jesus was, quote, too good to be true. He had never been in a church before. He didn't know anything about Jesus, and yet he knew that he had been led there that morning. Incredibly, he also shared that he was a pianist and that the melody of one of the worship songs we sang that morning was one that he knew. Not because he'd heard the song before, but because he would often play exactly the same melody when he would sit at his piano and improvise. Come on, eh? It was the song, Jesus, We Love You. <laughs> Before he went, we got to pray with him and he left having heard the good news of Jesus and experiencing his love. Praise God. Because why? We are responding to the call to extend our reach to reach the lost. By creating spaces and creating places, people are encountering the transformational power of Jesus. And last year, we continued with launching sites. We launched Verso the Mount. Now, the Mount site is um, very different than uh, other sites. It is actually within a prison, His Majesty's Prison, the Mount. But through opportunities and, uh, and through relationships, we were able to create a site within that church uh, within that prison where we run services on a Sunday, but more than that, we pastor the guys throughout the week and we do other things with them. Because as you can probably appreciate the sensitive nature of the men in there, I'm not able to share specific testimonies, but I wanna just um, give you this that was given to me. We see many have powerful encounters through prayer, responses to the word being preached, and seen many men experience freedom and transformation through encounters with Jesus. Testimonies are shared and men are preaching the gospel. God is on the move at the Mount. Amen. <clears throat> I've had the privilege of being there and to speak there and to serve with the guys. And there's maybe 70 men that meet on a Sunday. And seeing these men turn up so hungry for God and for an experience with him was challenging to me. I remember hearing one man in particular gave his testimony to the other men about how he used to live a particular kind of life, a life of, of stealing, a life of robbery, a, a life of violence. And yet when he came to prison and he encountered Jesus, he said, I don't know what happened. Something happened on the inside out and I can tell you I'm now a different man. That is the transformational power of Jesus. And we are called to what creates spaces and places for people to encounter the risen Lord. We don't have to go and put on some fancy show. We don't have to do some fancy entertainment. We just have to create that space and say, Lord, would you come and do that which only you can do? We don't need to hype the Holy Spirit. We just need to give him space to move. And that is what we're all about. Over the next three weeks, we are going to be launching some new sites I'm really excited about. We're going to be launching new spaces and new places. And I'd like to encourage you to be here over the next two to three weeks. I know you can watch it online, and if you are online with us, it's great that you are. But God is moving in our midst, and I want to outline to you what the Lord has been doing and what the Lord is calling us to this year as we continue as a people to respond to the mission to make disciples. I'd like you all to stand as I end.